Welcome to the Nerd Nest, where the Kirkwood Eagle lands for the word on today's entertainment. I'm Josh Bailey, and I'm here today with Logan Norfleet. Hello there. So let's fly right into today's topic, WandaVision. WandaVision is the new Disney Plus show that's taking the world by storm. We're going to go over what's happened so far and what may come next. Obviously, spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen WandaVision yet, what are you doing? Go watch it. It's good. All right, so for a little context, since we're talking about episode five here, we need to go over the first four episodes. So in the first episode, obviously, it's a sitcom. Not much happening there until the end of the episode where we see they're being monitored by S.W.O.R.D. Uh, Next episode, they seem to have jumped forward a decade in the TV show. It's still black and white. But some weird things start happening, you know, color starts showing up in the black and white, and there's a weird radio transmission that Wanda hears. But in the next episode, there is some color introduced to the world, and uh, Wanda seems to have, you know, some kind of knowing of what's going on, seems to throw somebody out of the entire anomaly. And in the fourth episode, we actually get to see what's going on a little bit. They're in a town called Westview, and the whole town is being surrounded by this weird apparatus, which they are now calling the Hex. And basically, we learn at the end of the episode that Wanda is controlling everything. So, that's kind of a basic background of the first four episodes, so let's get into episode five here. So, it starts out, at the end of episode four, we see Wanda give birth to... Uh, her twins, um, and in this episode, they're taking care of the baby for a little bit when suddenly they just grow up instantly. Yeah, that was a uh, a really big thing in the episode. Um, I think when it comes to the episode itself and the the children, Billy and Tommy, growing up that fast, especially how accelerated it is, um, I think that might be you know one of the first uh, times in Westview that Wanda isn't fully in control of what she's doing. Because in Westview, everything else, she's had it all her way. She's back with Vision. She has she has this perfect illusion of what she wants to happen in life in all these decades. But when Billy and Tommy are born, obviously the, before they even age up, they have the issue of the babies are crying and she can't uh, get them to stop crying. And she even asks, uh, why can't I, you know, why can't I control them? And so I think the the children are the first big thing in Westview that isn't quite under the control of Wanda the way that she wants it to be. And I think she is actually kind of playing it off like she it is because we do know that she is creating some conflicts in order to make a decent episode. We know that she's turning Westview into a sitcom. So we know that even in the first episode when there was the conflict with the boss and dinner or in the second episode where there was the conflict that uh vision was basically drunk for their magic show uh she was in control of that she was uh making the conflict and um these children aging at the beginning that the one that was played for laughs obviously that's probably related to the sitcom but later on when they age up again or i should say threaten to age up that's when she seems to be losing a little bit of control um so after the kids grow up at the beginning of the episode we get the um new intro uh intro always changes with every episode with yeah. whatever decade is uh, currently happening yeah and they kind of have the influences of uh sitcoms uh during that i believe the fifth episode had more of a family ties kind of intro to it because it was in the 80s kind of based itself on that and it's kind of done that for all the um the different episodes based on the decades they've had different uh, sitcoms as inspiration for them yeah and uh we get the intro to play so then these kids who are aged around i don't know five years old now they find this dog as part of the episode um conflict and you know there's this you know funny back and forth and Wanda says, well, you guys need to be at least 10 years old to take care of a dog. And then the kids age themselves up to be 10 years old. So obviously the children can actually age themselves at will, which I find pretty interesting. But also kind of out of her control. 
And I think while it's played off for laughs, Wanda definitely doesn't want them growing up because it's her children. She wants to be a mother, obviously. Yeah, and a lot of parents in real life obviously have that problem too. Of course, uh, us as human beings, we can't age at will. Uh, I have a feeling there's a lot of times in life we wish we could age at will. But um, Wanda is especially feeling it more than we are as human beings because, of course, their life is literally flashing before their eyes because they're growing at such a fast rate. And I have a feeling that that on top of all the stuff that Wanda's gone through in the MCU, um, that it's not helping her at all. Yeah. And um, so in this episode, we also get a bit more of a balance between the Westview world and the outside world. So outside of Westview at the sword camp, we get back to Monica Rambo, and she has uh, come up with this idea that her um, clothes, those weird 70s clothes that she was wearing, aren't actually brand new clothes. They are actually still made of the Kevlar vest that she was wearing. So she gets this idea that maybe we can monitor the inside by throwing in a piece of technology that is relevant to the times. So, uh, but before we actually get to see what that is, we move back inside Westview to Vision, where he's received this mysterious email and uh, has finally realized that, wait, something's up here. Yeah, he's really starting to... Uh, Wanda's kind of clueless about it. She's kind of been... You know, like in one of the episodes, uh, the the helicopter and stuff that shows up, it kind of catches her off guard and she starts to think about things. But really in episode five here with Vision, he's the one that really starts saying, you know, something's not right. Something isn't going the way it should. So, yeah, Vision is definitely the one that really kickstarted this something's going on. I don't know what's happening kind of thing. Yeah. And his, uh, his suspicions are completely justified when he uses his... Uh, Powers, I'm assuming his powers of the Mind Stone to uh, take out his co-worker's trance. And he suddenly starts begging to, for him to save him like he knows he's kidnapped. But that uh, feeling of being kidnapped is being suppressed by WandaVision. And this actually brings me to a question. If Vision is using some kind of mind powers to uh, take them out of a trance does he actually have some kind of mind stone type thing on him well i know obviously he has the mind stone equipped on his head of course but um we never really got to see every single thing that vision could do yeah he could shoot a laser out of it we saw that in civil war uh, when he hit Rhodey. Um, and we also got to see that obviously he can manipulate himself so that he can be translucent. He can go through things like walls and people and stuff like that. But we haven't actually seen the full capabilities of the Mind Stone when it comes to Vision's arsenal. And of course, we've seen the Mind Stone in other forms like Loki's Scepter, where he can, can literally control the minds of others. So that comes to question. If Loki can use the Mind Stone to control people's minds... It, it kind of it, it kind of justifies that answer where it should be relevant that he can use the Mind Stone to kind of reverse somebody else's mind control by the looks of it. Now here's my train of thought. Scarlet Witch's powers, well, actually, they don't ever actually call her Scarlet Witch, and they actually mention that in this episode that she doesn't have her wacky superhero name yet. But Wanda, Wanda's powers come from the Mind Stone. And Vision's powers also come from the Mind Stone, but that's because the Mind Stone was actually in his head. But obviously, with Endgame, the Mind Stone was destroyed. So what I'm thinking is, Vision's powers are coming from... Well, obviously, Vision's body is being manipulated by Wanda. But the, she's also freely given him his powers back, which means she has given her husband the ability to break her trances. Yeah, and that, that might not be the best thing because, of course, in the real MCU timeline, Vision is dead. Vision is gone. There's no getting him back after uh, how Thanos removed the Mind Stone from his head at the end of Infinity War. So, of course, 
Vision is obviously been reincarnated, and we do see some of that in episode five when Wanda. Uh, it's kind of right after the events of Endgame when Wanda goes in and storms the uh, the sword facility and sees Vision's body in pieces, and they're doing experiments on him, and they take she takes the body, and I, I assume that's what makes him become reincarnated in the world of Westview. But that really begs the question that if Vision has the power to unmind control people and he's starting to see that something's not right in Westview, could that mean that if he figures this out and he gets out of Westview, obviously Wanda doesn't want that to happen because, of course, that could re-kill Vision technically because in Westview he's alive, but in the real world he technically isn't. And we can't know for sure what they were doing at the sword facility. It was kind of blurry. It was far away, but... Obviously, Scarlet Witch broke in, stole his body, and reanimated it with her powers. And we, she kind of saw through her own illusion in the last episode where we saw Vision with a hole in his head and he's all grayed out, wide-eyed. Yes, the return of the corpse Vision from Infinity War. But S.W.O.R.D. is so far, at least, coming out as, like, the good guys. And Wanda is seeming more like the antagonist. And, um... Wanda, after they send in the drone to observe Wanda, even though S.W.O.R.D. had the other intention of actually, like, shooting at her, Wanda comes out, and she's in full costume, full superhero costume, and she has her accent back. Yes, the return of the Sokovian accent and her original Avengers outfit. Yeah, the... I don't know if the accent actually ever went away. I don't think she had enough voice lines in the later movies or long enough voice lines to actually tell. But she's definitely trying to keep it American while she's in sitcom land. Absolutely. But, so she comes out, she storms out, throws the drone away, and basically tells them, you better watch it, or I'm going to kill you. Yes, and with that, before we move on to anything else, a big thing here is we see something that we, a lot of people have been like, have I seen this before? Yes, you have. Before uh, Wanda goes back into Westview, she does what I like to call the flick of the wrist. And as she's doing this, all of the guns of the sword agents uh, flips onto them. And uh, that's a very, very obvious nod to the original X-Men in 2000 when Magneto, the original comic book father of Scarlet Witch, actually did a very similar thing. So there are speculations on that as to is this a nod to... Disney's acquisition of Fox and possibly introducing the X-Men or just a nod to something else in pop culture. We don't know. Um, the scenes are kind of similar. It is a bit of a stretch to think that because, you know, all she did was use her mind control to get all the agents to turn their gun on the leader. But, you know, that is a definitely that is definitely a valid comparison to make. Um, so also another thing in this episode we see is that. Agnes, her next door neighbor, seems to be completely fine that she has powers now. Yes. Wanda definitely started expressing that she doesn't care that her powers are being seen now. And this is getting Vision a little more concerned. It is. Uh, you can really see this when uh, Agnes uh, comes out or Sparky runs away and uh, Billy and Tommy and Wanda are looking for him. And they come out and they see Agnes carrying uh, the body of Sparky. And she says that he ate these leaves out of the bush and he died. And um, Billy and Tommy just keep asking Wanda, bring him back, resurrect him, bring him back. And I don't know if it's just good acting on Agnes's part or if it was a genuine reaction. But she looks at Wanda and she's like, you can do that? You know, you have these powers. You can bring someone back from the dead. So I think that's a valid point there. And then this seemed to be the last straw for Vision because they came, they come home after this and they start arguing and the argument gets very heated and it looks like we're about to see an actual Wanda versus Vision fight here. Yes, with them levitating in the room and looking at each other in the argument. Yes, it was very big. It definitely seems to be getting very heated. I've never seen Vision actually get this angry before. Never. This is something new that he's done in the MCU. So obviously... Um, Vision starts to realize that, you know, every time they seem to be having some kind of argument, uh, there's a knock at the door. And so there is a knock at the door and Vision's like, eh, what are you doing? And she's like, no, this isn't me. So she goes to the door and it's none other than 
Pietro Maximoff, except with a twist. It is not the James Arnold Taylor Pietro that we saw in Avengers Age of Ultron. It is instead the Evan Peters uh, Quicksilver that we saw in the X-Men universe. Yes, that was a very huge nod uh, with uh, the X-Men version with Evan Peters. And like I've said with the Magneto thing, with the flick of the wrist, this could be a nod or an introduction of the X-Men into this universe now that Disney has acquired Fox. See, this is this is where I am wondering what their intention here is. Are they introducing a multiverse or are they giving a nod to to the preferred Quicksilver, because as we saw back in 2014 or 2015 when these two movies came out nearly side by side, people seem to prefer the Fox version of Quicksilver. So have they just gotten rid of James Arnold Taylor? I'd like to think not. I kind of preferred his Quicksilver. His Quicksilver was very enjoyable. Um, Obviously, I did like the Evan Peters version as well in Days of Future Past and uh, Apocalypse and uh, just recently Dark Phoenix. And um, but it seems as though the MCU had their own uh, ways with the character and they got to do that with James Arnold Taylor. And um, now obviously he died at the hands of Ultron. And so who knows with this Evan Peters version now introduced in WandaVision, what, we, this could be the multiverse this or this could be a nod. We have no idea. This is actually something that happened in the comics. Wanda has actually been able to uh, warp realities, e either the one she's in or one she's not in. She's actually been able to, you know, move the multiverse herself. And we already know she's wielding a lot of power in just keeping Westview how it is. And uh, Jimmy Woo in the show even said that Wanda has never displayed this kind of power before even when she was the only one who was able to go head to head with Thanos, she's never displayed this kind of power before. Absolutely. And that really kind of raises the question um, because it's already been confirmed that Scarlet Witch is going to be in uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness uh, with Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, and it's going to be uh, a big thing where with this power that Wanda is showing, it's really looking like Wanda is going to break down and become the villain of Doctor Strange 2. Very possibly. And um, obviously, S.W.O.R.D. is trying to break into Westview somehow. Currently, the decade in Westview is in the 80s. And every time something enters Westview, it changes to the decade, right? It changes into something that would be appropriate in this time. So with this being episode five, obviously, one episode or two episodes took place in the same decade because they took place simultaneously if we go by this by episode eight which will be about the 2010s they will have the kind of technology they will need to just go in with all their weapons yeah and so it's basically going to be waiting on time here to be able to infiltrate uh westview and try to get a stop on this and try to figure out what's going on and obviously from the trailer, we see that there's this kind of back and forth between Wanda and Vision, like, this is our home, then let's fight for it. So obviously something is attacking Westview. Maybe they're fighting together, maybe they're fighting against each other. I'd like to think they're fighting together and uh, Wanda still has the Vision, or Wanda still has the wool pulled over Vision's eyes, and he's going to be fighting alongside her against the sword agents but maybe he'll eventually come to his senses. Absolutely. But uh, ultimately, there's a lot that is still up in the air about this. We still have a lot to witness. We still have a lot to kind of put together. And it's ultimately, like we've said, it's the first season. And there's still a lot that they can do and a lot of stuff that they can uh, put into the show. And so I think, you know, WandaVision has definitely grabbed uh, our attention and I think it really does have the fans intrigued uh, by far. And I believe that we can only expect a thrilling conclusion for this first season and to this big jump start to the new phase, phase four of the MCU. Absolutely. So, yeah, thank you guys for stopping by the Nerd Nest. We will see you guys in the next one. Gotta fly.